Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and this is the Franz Foamworks The Box. Number four. The Box is a monthly subscription service full of kits and parts designed by people in the hobby for people in the hobby. Today's kit was designed with HVZ in mind, and this is the perfect blaster for that because the Adventure Force Villainator is, in my opinion, one of the best HVZ blasters since the Alpha Trooper. And arguably, it has better performance than the Alpha Trooper out of the box. The problem is there aren't as many options for it. Uh, it's not quite as modular, largely because it hasn't existed as long. Which is why I'm glad that kits like this now exist. This kit was designed by Matt Runyard of Rextech in collaboration with Franz Foamworks, and it is a external kit for the Villainator. There isn't any internal modifications uh, included in this kit, but it adds a great deal of functionality and modularity, and I absolutely love it. So we're going to go over all the parts and show how easy it is to install and kind of explain all of the modularity that it adds. Now the first thing that it adds is more options for the stock, because the Adventure Force stock, there, as far as I know, there's only two of them, maybe three, uh, and they're not very good and the stock attachment point is proprietary to those stocks. So we have an adapter that adapts it to standard end strike attachment points, and therefore a huge variety of stocks, including pretty much all AR stocks, as there are AR buffer tube stocks for the end strike attachment point. So we could, for instance, use this stock, which gives it just a little bit more length, which I like. There are obviously much longer ones and adjustable ones, but I, I kind of like this one. There is also a, a screw port for a sling mount. If you wanted to run it without a stock, but wanted a single point sling, you would then have one, because this doesn't have one in the grip like most end strike blasters do. So there is that option as well. We now take a look at rail. The only rail that this thing had was the uh, Adventure Force rail there on the top, and there's basically no attachments for it. It might be compatible with Nerf ones, but um, what we really want, of course, is Picatinny rail. So the first thing we have is this, which is sort of a shroud that goes around the barrel and just clips in place. It's that easy to install. No screws, no glue, no nothing. It just pops on. And now you have side rail, which you could attach flashlights or whatever else you wanted onto that rail. We then, of course, have full top rail, which just slides onto the original rail. Second piece also slides onto the little bit there and uh, locks into place there. And then finally we have a cap piece which simply clips on to the front. And then there is a screw hole right there which will use one of the screws from here, from the grip when we take it off. Or you could probably use pretty much any Nerf screw or any small screw. The, this is the prototype, it only has the one screw hole. The production one will have a second screw hole. I'm not entirely sure where. It might be to connect these two, though I don't think that would be necessary. I'm hoping it um, better locks this into place, because right now it, it locks down, but not, not great. So I'm hoping they're putting in a screw here somewhere. If not, you could easily tap your own and just use another one of the screws from the grip to better secure that front piece, which would fully secure your rail. There is then one rail attachment that comes with it, which is this dart holder, which can simply slide on to our rail right there and just give you a little bit of extra dart storage for reloading. It uses just a hex nut to stay on there, and it's really, it's quite nice. And it would attach to any Picatinny rail. You could put it on the side here, you could put it on the top, you could put it wherever you want. That's the beauty of Picatinny rail. We are then going to have to remove the pump grip, which will require a screwdriver. Train! So we just have the four screws right here that need to come out. And then we're going to take one of them. Get it. Leave off. And we'll be using it up here to secure the rail. Right like that. Lovely. We will need both pins from the original grip. There are two pins, and we will need them both. And then we have this replacement lower grip, which has Picatinny rail. The pins go in the top holes right there, and then it simply installs and gets clamshell together. And then we tighten down our screws. Don't tighten them too much, or you will strip them out. They don't need to be particularly tight, 
because you're you're gonna want to put some sort of a, a grip on here whether it be a vertical grip or an angled grip uh, whatever grip your preference is this is picatinny rail so you can attach whatever you want and that grip will be what really secures this so you don't need to worry about those screws being overly tight and if you tighten them too much you will break something i am going to attach an, a small angled foregrip that came with my um xc mark ii the beta version of the xc because it's a it's a nice little grip and it fits on there quite nicely and uh, works beautifully you might want a bigger one or a smaller one or a vertical one or whatever you prefer um, being picatinny it can take whatever it is that you desire so that is the kit and how easy it is to install and all of the features that it gives you it gives you just a huge range of modularity that you didn't have before and i really really like it it doesn't have any internal uh, modifications nor does this kit come with the blaster unfortunately the previous one had the option to come with the blaster but they weren't able to source enough of them uh, they are fairly cheap you can get them through amazon for I, or yeah amazon or target for i believe 20 bucks so uh, this kit is the most expensive one they've had so far coming in at 50 dollars uh, but it is an absolutely beautiful kit i love the way it it cleans up the lines on this blaster that full top rail and the filling in the side it, it just makes it feel a little bit beefier i definitely like being able to have an angled foregrip bam uh, absolutely love it um, now i will have a follow-up uh, video on this where i'm going to modify this one for hvz i had originally put k26 in it but that was definitely too heavy i dropped it down to k25 i think that might still be too heavy so i'm going to experiment with springs and uh put together a video on what i think would be the best spring combination in order to get right around 115 fps because that is ideal for hvz much more than that and you, you just don't need it and a lot of places cap at 120 so i'm gonna aim for 115 and that'll be a fun build i will probably do some stuff to it cosmetically um though not a whole lot i really like how that looks the uh, i really like the green for an hvz blaster so stay tuned for that that is the scoop on the box number four there is of course one additional item that's not being shown here one super secret item that will be exclusive to this box it can only be getting gotten in this box this kit may eventually be available elsewhere but that that one item will be exclusive so 50 bucks gets you all of the printed parts on that super secret item i think it's excellent i i believe it is worth it and you should get yourself one so there it is Thank you for watching.